So the first thing I want to show you is something called free layout. And in non-CNC modes, this has always been easy to do, but in CNC mode, it was disallowed because if you have multiple objects and you slice them, you need to make sure that you have enough space in between them to allow for the tools that you're using. And so in the past, this was automatic. Now you can control this with free layout and that allows you to move your objects around and place them any way you wish. It does permit you to create overlapping paths, which is now your responsibility if you choose this option. So um, that's sort of been a long time coming. The next thing, which is probably much more significant is uh, origin controls. And uh, in the past, origin was always there, but you couldn't see it. And now you have a show origin option. And this indicates that the uh, origin in this case is the top of the parts in the middle of the build area because we haven't defined a stock. Now, if you check, uncheck origin top, you'll see it goes down to the build area and you uncheck origin center, you'll see that it goes down to the corner here. Now, all that changes when we introduce stock. And so in the past, we had the ability to set a stock size. Let's just say we set it to 100 um, by maybe 60 by 50, and that would create and show a stock for the build area. Now, um, this has always been sort of useful as a visualization, but Orange didn't always obey the stock controls, and now it does. And so if you uncheck Origin Center, you'll see that it goes to the edge of the stock um, like that. And when you generate G-code, it's now relative to the stock. Another somewhat more interesting thing about stock is you can now do offsets. Um, and offsets from the parts themselves. So if you have something set up like this and in free layout mode, you start moving a part around, you'll notice that the stock follows the offsets from the bounding box of these parts, as does the origin. And again, if you uncheck origin center and start moving these parts around, you'll see that the origin moves with these. So that's, that's pretty useful. Um, and the, uh, the offset is pretty useful as well. Now, um, in roughing mode, there is an implicit facing if your parts are not aligned with the top of the stock. And the way you do that is what's called Z-top offset down here. So if I push that down by two millimeters, you'll see it pushes those down into the stock by three millimeters. And this basically allows you to have a roughing pass, or sorry, a facing pass, a sort of roughing. If I click slice now, you'll see that um, it has sliced to the top of those objects. If I put them down more aggressively and re-slice, you'll see that it uh, actually generates the cuts on top of that. So um, I don't think I actually explicitly called that out in any previous videos. That's useful to know. Um, and the next thing is uh, when you export G-code, it does uh, respect both the stock and the origin settings. But there's another feature of Kiramoto, which I haven't touched on in the past, which is G-code import. So in this case, if I uh, export the G-code like this, download it, and then go back into arrange mode, if I drag this G-code back onto the bed, it'll render the G-code for me. Um, now, the interesting thing about the rendering of the G-code is that it uses the origin it's set at the time of the import. So if I go down here and uncheck origin center and then redrag this on here, you'll notice that the import is relative to that origin. So there are all kinds of really useful cases um, for using this for visualization, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's all I wanted to show in this video. Hope it was useful. Leave comments below.